Hello, welcome back to the Endgame series. Hello, Smart Sky, Rishabh, Joe, Ash, and Aryan. Yes, you are before time today. So we will be continuing with this series, and today we will be starting with Rook Endgames, as I promised. So this is going to be a long chapter, and uh, first we will be dealing with Rook versus Pawns. So one side has rook and other side has pawns. So they are rook end games are supposed to be one of the most difficult end games. Hello, dead elephant. Hello, Peter. I guess everybody was waiting for this rook end games more than any other end games. Okay, so let us begin. White king b6, pawn c6, black king a1, and rook on d5. Rook and games are cool. <laughs> So they write here, so we are first looking at rook versus pawns. Practically all these endgames are rapid, that means that the outcome of the fight depends as a rule on a single tempo. We shall study typical techniques. Mastering them does not free us from necessity of deep and precise calculations, but makes this job much easier. So this is the famous position called as the Savedra position composed by uh, Savedra in 1895 white to play and win white to play and win hello camelax Yeah, these two, there are a few endgames which are very famous. So this is one of them called as the Savedra position. There is also another called as the Lucena position. There is Philidor position. So these endgames have names. So quite uh, rare that happens that endgames have names. Special positions have names. So this is one of it. Out of the few endgames which have names, this is one called as the Savedra position. And also, this is a must-know endgame. So if we want to study endgame, this is the position that we must know and begin with. First, let us look at the rarest case when a pawn is stronger than the rook. So this pawn is going this way, of course. Black will give, black will try to give up the rook for the pawn. C7, rook d6. Today you are not playing music. One minute, let me check. Music is on. Let me start again.
Is it okay now, Aryan? I hope it's not loud and we can concentrate on the positions. C7, rook d6, rook b5, rook d5, rook b4 and so on. But what happens after that? We need to know until the end. I forgot to send you puzzle. I will send it to you and maybe later on you can try to solve it. Okay, okay Peter. Send me later and I will discuss next time. Music was on. He trolled you. Don't do that people. Don't troll me. I'm an innocent girl. I, I just believe you easily. Hello Jeannie, Privyat. This is dead draw? No, this is a white to play and win, called as the savage draw position. Yes, it is a win, so let's see. White plays c7. Now the threat is c8. So black will play rook d6 check, king b5, now we have to try to run out of the checks because if we go to b7, black will just play rook d7 and next move take the pawn. So king b5, also not king c5 because black will play rook here and then take this pawn. That is why correct move is king b5, he will try to check again. The same idea, king b4. So going in the c5 is not right because of the idea rook d1 and rook c1. And if white goes to a5, he just plays rook c5 and next move just sacrifice the rook. So after king b4, rook d4 check. King b3, rook d3 check. And now king c2. It looks like... White is winning because now the c8 queen cannot be stopped but here black has an interesting defense and that is he plays a rook d4, a good move by black. Now if white makes a queen, he plays rook c4 and it is a stalemate so if we make a queen, he gives this check and after this it's a stalemate. That is why after rook d4 we have to promote to a rook. Any other move does not help white. If he goes here, again black repeats by going back to d1. So we have to make a rook. And now the threat is a rook a8 checkmate. Hello Mr. Sabon, I missed lesson yesterday but today I'm in time. Just let me get some tea. Okay, welcome. This is called as the Savidra position. And now rook a8 is the threat. So black has to play rook a4 to defend this and after king b3 white wins because there are double attack, rook c1 is made and king capture a4. That is why this position white wins. Yes, very interesting. Next one. White king h8, rook g7, black king b6 and pawn a5. White to play and win. How is your rating only 2300? I don't know. I need to play more because of this situation. I can't play more tournaments. I have already two women grandmaster norms and I wanted to complete it this year but unfortunately I can't I could not play any tournaments so my goal has become further a little bit white to play and win
You need to cut Black King, yes. Thank you for following Rubinstein. Hello, Blasting King. It's quite hot in here. Let me put some. Yes, we need to cut off the black skin. That idea is right. So rook g5 or rook g4? Rook g5, you are right. Rook g5 is the move. So the idea is that we have to cut black skin as much as possible. And we start with rook g5. And there is no way black can make a progress in this position. Because if he plays a4, we just don't do anything. We just start bringing the king. And when he plays a3, then we attack this pawn by rook g3. And we get this pawn like that. So that is why we need to cut off the king. So only move is rook g5. And if black plays anything else, let's say king a6, we just bring the king closer to the pawn. We can even bring here. Yeah, king f6. No, not here. I don't want to cut up. So. We can even wait and make the king go back. And when he does, we can play rook a5 and win this pawn. So the main idea in these positions is that we have to try to cut off the king as much as we can. So the same position with black to play. Is it kind of Zugzwang? It is a kind of a technique to stop this pawn from making more progress. So now the same position with black to play and they say this is a draw because first move black has to play king b5 or king c5. a4 will be a mistake again because of rook g5. So if we have this extra move, bring the king and the position is drawn because if the rook cuts off on the fourth rank like this, it is not so much helpful. And um, White has to play finally rook g1 and this is a draw. That is why we have to cut off on the 5th rank. One second, I missed some hydrate, yes? Earth to redeem hydrate blasting king. Okay, so next one, next one, buy this hydrate, I have kept it as an option for you to make me hydrate because you can take care of me like that. King g5, king f7, pawn g7 and rook a6. Yes, <laughs> when I am studying, I forget these things. So, you remind me. Now, why to play? What happens in this position? So this is an instructive example uh, in which a pawn promotes to a knight. So white can try to win by rook h2 check, king c1 and king c3. So if black makes a queen, white will give a checkmate here. So black has to make a knight in this position, b1 knight. King d3. 
Thank you for the cheer, Earth. Thank you so much. And B1 Knight King D3 and Knight A3. And we will study this position more later. But right now we have to know that this is a draw. Because black plays Knight A3, Knight B1 and it leads to a draw. It is worth mentioning that here if black plays knight b5, it is a mistake. And they say here in bold letters that in rook versus knight endgames, one should not separate the knight from the king. So the knight and king should be kept closer. So this is a mistake. And... They have just said here it loses the knight. It loses the knight. And how it happens, let me think. Dead elephant, redeem hydrate. Uh, there is some way to trap this knight. There must be some way. Rook a6. Yeah, rook a6. Probably. Thank you for following. Rook a6. And now knight can be played to d6. Knight c7 will be met by rook c6. And king can't move. King d1 then there is checkmate. And king moves to b5 then rook b6. Well done camel X. That is why knight should be kept closer to the king. And there is also another way black can save this endgame. Look at this. After rook h2, another way black can save this endgame is by playing king b1, double exclamation mark. And when white plays king c3, king a1. And white cannot take this pawn because of stalemate and it is a draw. So there are two ways for black to draw this kind of endgame. Now similar case with a rook spawn. So this was a knight spawn, b file and g file knight spawn. Now we will be dealing with the rook spawn that is a and h file. White king d5, black king b1, pawn on a3, white rook h2. And they say here it is white to play and win. Thank you for following Vignesh. Just move to b3 and then a1 knight. And king a3. Yes. Yes, absolutely right, Mr. Sabon. So king c4, a2, king b3. And now after a1 knight, white plays king a1 and black is in Zugzwang. Because the knight can't move and if he plays king c1, Rook h1 wins this knight. So this is winning for white. <laughs> Go. Why can't he give knight c to check? Oh, sorry, 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 you are right. I'm sorry.
of what I'm doing. Yes, you are right. I'm sorry. King c4, a2, king b3, a1, knight, and then king c3. King c3. Yes. Thank you for telling me that. Thank you for following. And king c3. And now this is Zugzwang. Because knight can't move. And after king c1, there is just rook h1 and this is winning for white king c5 black king b1 pawns on b5 a3 and rook h2 white to play and win so now there is an additional pawn on b5 rishim rosenoyer redeemed and nicola redeemed hydrate <laughs> she will become overhydrated. <laughs> yes, please don't kill me. Thank you for following. Hello, James Blunder. James Flander is here with us. He has cool emote with glasses. Now this is white to play and win. So let's see what is the idea. White plays the same plan, king b4, a2, first move king b5 is a mistake because black will just play a2 and queen, so that is why king b4, a2, king b3, a1 knight, check, king c3. Now the v now we reach the same position with extra pawn for black b4 king capture b4 knight c2 king c3 and here is a way to win this for white after knight e3 and the correct move they say here is a rook h4 Okay, let's just see what happens. King a2, rook a4 check, this is a long variation where white uh, is able to win. Okay, we can't remember all this, but we can know that there is a way for white to win. Now next puzzle. White king d3, black king b3, pawn on a3. Thank you for following Anand. A rook on h8.
We have already seen a case of stalemate. The following position is also worth keeping in mind. Yes, we remember we saw one position with stalemate. Black pawn was on b2 and black king went to a1 and after a rook capture b2 it was a stalemate. So this is also a concept of stalemate. And black to play and draw. Yes, this is black to play and draw. And we have to use the idea of stalemate. Yeah, let's say king b2. We can start with king b2. Here a2 is a blunder. So if black plays a2, rook b8 check, king a3, and now white plays king c2. With the idea rook a8 check. So the only way black can play is a1 knight. King c3. And now again black is in zook song. And if he plays king a2 we just make a waiting move. Rook b7. And after king a3 we play rook a7. And white wins. That is why king b2 is a blunder. I mean, uh, a2 is a blunder, king b2 is the right move. King b2, rook b8 check, king c1. Rook a8, king b2. And after he gives this check, we just play king a1 and it's a stalemate idea for black. And if the rook moves, we are again play king b2. And this is a draw. Easy to miss king c1. Yes. If we place king a1, we can play king c3 and just mate like that. King c4, black king f2, thank you for following, a king f2, black pawn g4, rook a8. Thank you, big dean, and welcome. Are you celebrating Diwali now? Yes, we have celebration for 4-5 for days. Thank you, Aryan. So this is a game between Kord Chennai and Kingis, played in 1996. 
and in this position uh, black resigned so they ask here what is the winning idea for white white to play and win Rook f8, king e2, do you coach anyone? Yes, I do coaching, but very selectively, you can send me a message. Rook f8 and then rook g8. So rook f8, king e2, rook g8, king f3. And then we can bring the king, king d3, g3, check. Thank you for following. Double. One second, how to win this? Rook G8, he plays G2. In F2, he plays King H1. Okay, and now rook h8. Rook h8 is just winning. <laughs> yes. We don't take on g2 because it's a stalemate. That is why this is winning. You're absolutely right. Rook f8 is the answer. They say if we start with king d3, it's a mistake. Black plays g3. And now after rook f8 check, he plays king e1, which is the main move in such kind of positions. And it leads... To a draw. White king can't go near the pawn. And this is a draw. So we need this extra tempo. And this is called an intermediate check for a gain of tempo. Rook f8. And now black can't play king e1 because of rook g8. And this pawn will be lost. So he has to wait. And then we force him to go to f3 instead of f2. We force him to go to f3 and then we move the king. King d3, g3, rook f8, king g2 and king e2 wins. Okay, next one, king c4, black king b2, pawn on a2, and rook on h3. Hello, Salambo. This is an instructive example. Thank you, Har. Now here, rook h2 check and black plays king a3 and this ace is a draw. Black achieves a draw by not allowing the white king to approach the pawn. If he plays first move king b1, after rook h2 if he plays king b1, it's a mistake. 
because of the position we saw earlier makes knight and king c3 king c3 this is a win for white so black plays in this position king a3 and makes a draw thank you for following and welcome to our end game series let us look at a slightly more complicated case in the next diagram. King g8, rook, h8, pawn on a6 and black king b6. Black to play and draw. Will you start late night chess tonight? Maybe. I will. I will do it. In B5. Yes, this is black to play and draw. We started with a similar position. If this is white to play, we know that white plays rook h5 and um, cuts off our king on the fifth rank. This is black to play and draw, Anand, not white to play. White will try to win this. So the question is king b5 or Pawn is going this side. Pawn is going this side. In this lead chess, whenever I set up the position and press black to play, it automatically flips the board and I can't change it. I would prefer if the position was from white side always, but I don't know how to make it here. And flip board like this. Okay. I can flip the board. So the pawn is going this side and black to play and draw. So the question is to play king c5 or king b5. Of course not a5 first because rook h5 and white wins. So king c5 or king b5. Thank you Sal for following. And there is a difference between both these moves that we have to try to understand. King c5. Yes, king c5 is the move. King b5 is a mistake. King b5 is a mistake because white plays king f7, a5, king e6, a4, and king d5. And white king is in time to uh, stop the pawn. Now if a3, James Plunderer, thank you so much for the gift, thank you so much and thank you for following Retro. Yeah, if a3, white will give this check. And after king a4, the king is close to this pawn and next move threatening to play rook a8. That is why we have to stop white's king. And that is why again we start with king c5 
and this is the draw they say black does not allow the white king to approach his pawn so if king f7 a5 king e6 and same but white king cannot play king d5 and now the king is far away I want a game with white king and rook and black king with three pawns on one side as an end game. Thank you for following. Yes. So these small moves make a big difference. And at the beginning of the chapter they had said that tempo is everything. And one tempo can decide the result of these end games. Now next is a composition by Richard Reddy. Thank you for the gift sub. Thank you for following David. Um, okay, so now this is white to play and win. White to play and win. James Blunter again. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. E. I know the solution as I have seen. Okay, so this is a composition, a very nice composition by Richard Reti, uh, composed in 1928. And white to play and win. So this pawn is going this side. And we have to try to bring the king. But black is stopping this by shouldering black is stopping white skin from making any progress yes james is a cool guy he's the best Rook h4, black will play d4. Rook d2, also d4. So black's next move is d4. <laughs> Seems wonder. Okay, so if you start with rook h4, I will play d4. And after king d7, trying to go c6, I will play king d5. And stop this king. King e7, then king e5. So this is what I want to do with black. Thank you for following. So this is black's idea. I want to have this in it. Rook d1. Also black plays d4. So we know black's idea black wants to play d4 and when we move the king he just stops us by playing king d5 king c5 okay james plunder see you and have a great day to you Stop spamming the chat. What are you doing? Oof. Okay, one second. Let me take care of this.
<laughs> yes, I, I just banned him. I'm trying to study this endgame and and what are you doing guys? This one two people they just ruin for all of us. They just completely distract us from these beautiful endgames. So if anybody does that, anybody tries to spam the chat, I will just ban them. Only people who want to uh, study chess uh, are welcome here. Study chess, talk and have a uh, you know positive attitude. Only they are welcome. All these other people instantly banned. Yes, I don't know what is happening since yesterday. A lot of spammers we have in the chat. So instant ban. And also I made Badur as our moderator. So he instantly takes action, which is very good for us. Hello, chess to go. Good morning. Yes, yeah, sometimes I miss the chat. So if if I miss somebody who is spamming or you know is um, impolite, just um, um, you know tell me about it. I will instantly ban them because the moderators might not be here all the time, and I have only two moderators. <laughs> so just um, let me know. Okay, so rook a4, again pawn d4. How to identify whether king can stop a pawn? Um, the best is try to calculate till the end, Anand. Because uh, even though we have techniques for them, all the positions are different. So you can try to calculate in your mind. White to play and win. We have to keep the rook in the same file to stop the pawn. The question is how to bring the king near. The hint is a position. The hint is a position what we learned in pawn in games. Rook d3. Yes, the hint is a position. So first move is rook d3 or rook d2. Doesn't matter. So one of these moves we play first. Let's say rook d2. And after he plays pawn to d4, we play rook d1. And this is the solution because we waste a move. But we are getting a position now in this position. And now black's turn it is. And we can move the king. Rook d1. If he plays king d5, we play king d7 and black is in Zugzwang now. If he plays king c4, we go king e6. If he plays king e4, we go king c6. And this is how white wins. So let me try king c4, king e6. Yes, now the pawn is under attack and after d2, king e3 and king is in time. Also, so first rook d2, promote this line, d4 and rook d1 giving up the tempo. And if he plays king e4, of course we play king d6 and again we will be in time. And black loses this pawn. And they say if we start with rook d1, it is a mistake because d4, if we play king d7, black takes their position and prevents an outflanking. King c7, then king c5. And now white is in Zugzwang. 
and if we play here rook d3 or rook d2 the rook will be attacked rook will be attacked king e3 and white has to save this move again with rook d1 and he is not in time and this will be a draw yes the time wasting move is the key and at the end black king can go on the rook yes if we play something else black draws so only way is to play rook d2 and rook d1 and take this a position and next we play on the other side Next is a tragic comedy. Tragic comedy. King f7, black king f5, pawn g7, and a rook c7. White to play. And this is a game between Newman versus Steinitz. So black is William Steinitz, the first uh, world champion in chess. And this was played in 1870. White to play. Yes, excellent work. King g8 is right move. King g8, you are right side. And this is a draw. This is a draw because after king g8, when black plays king g6 or king f8, white plays king h8. Excellent move. And now uh, black can't take on g7 because it's a stalemate. And next move we play g8 and make a draw. So this was supposed to be a draw, but in the game was played a blunder. White played king f8. And black won this game after king f6. Now this is the threat rook c8. So white made a knight. And we already saw something similar. King e6. And let's see the game what happened. Knight h6. Rook h7. And again they say white had a chance to save this by playing knight g8. But instead he played knight g4. And rook h3. Black won this game. Because knight has no squares to move. Knight c7 will be met by rook c6. King on the b file. King on the g file will be met with rook g3. And if king moves here. We have rook check. And black won this. One more tragic comedy. White king c6, pawn on b6, rook on b1, black king f5, rook on d8 and pawn on f6. Black to play. I don't know why every time I select black to play it flips the board, does not even ask me. I will keep it from white side so there is no confusion. So the white pawn is going here, black pawn is going this side. And this is a game between Alekhine, Alexander Alekhine and Bogol Jubov. Black to play and draw. I am Baggio, shouldering, yes, that's the answer. That is the idea for the answer. King e4 is the move. King e4 is the move, you are right. But here in the game, 
the world championship challenger played king g4 and it is a blunder and he lost the game in few moves after b7 f5 b8 queen thank you hungary for following rook b8 rook b8 f4 king d5 f3 king e4 f2 and white king is in time for this pawn and bogolgibo lost to alekhine this way but the right way would be to play king e4 and now the same line but black king stops the white king so if white plays b7 f5 takes takes rook b8 f4 and the king cannot reach on time to attack this pawn because of the king's position on e4 so in the previous line king was on g4 and white king could easily come here but now the king stops white's king and makes a draw please play fully okay king e4 now white can try to stop it let's say Rook f8 or rook e8. And he wins and white has to give up the rook. And that is why makes a draw. So the king cannot reach as you see the king cannot reach in time hello live for chess of course it's good idea to play out sometimes too even even we get confused in this end games king f1 rook h1 this is a very beautiful position let's see if we can find this out extremely amazing uh, composition white to play and win King f1, king b6, rook h1, knight h7, rook c2, pawn d5, and two pawns on e6 and f6. Pawn direction, okay. Pawn is going, white pawn is going this side, and black pawns are going this side. The so white pawn is attacking this. By the way, here are the coordinates below the board A, B, C, D. So if you're confused, just look at it. I know, I understand. Even I get confused, it takes me a <laughs> few seconds to understand. To where the pawns are going d takes e black will play rook c1 and take this Hello Arpicordi. So first of all this uh, d capture e6 rook c1 this endgame is not winning for white. 
rook capture h1 king capture h1 black will play king c6 and this pawn will be lost soon because um, knight can go to f8 and defend it but king e7 attacks the knight and also gets this pawn on e6 so this will not be winning for white because of this f6 pawn knight cannot save from g5 knight takes pawn then we will play king d6 and this pawn is lost and this is a drawn end game king knight versus king so after d capture e6 he will play rook c1 check if you start knight f6 first black will take this pawn and or also rook c1 check is possible rook c1 check if you take this rook c1 check and next we exchange the rooks and take this pawn so we need pawn to win this end game What happens if king f2 after rook c1? You are in right direction, Siaran. So this is the right direction. D e, d e6, rook c1, and king f2, and after rook h1. So d e, rook c1, king f2, rook h1, e7. This is something we have to calculate. And now black will start giving checks after rook h2. Black will start giving checks. Rook h2, rook h3. And this is something we need to calculate. What about d e6, rook c1 and king e2? So same idea, black will take the rook and start giving checks. Start giving checks. So we need to bring the king away from all these checks. And then we will be able to win this. Thank you, Winst. What is the tactical principle used in this composition? Okay, so I will uh, say d e6, rook c1, king f2, rook h1, and e7, rook h2. We have to get out of the checks and then we can win this. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. We have to get out of checks. Thank you, Scrabble Man. Thank you, Stir Knight. Wins Prime Redeem Hydrate. Thank you, let's root. Rook h2, then king f3, then rook h3. Black will keep giving checks. This is a very nice position. Okay, I will play the first starting moves. Thank you for following. So first move is DE6. Rook C1 check. King F2. King F2. Thank you, Ali, and everybody welcome. Rook capture h1. e7 and rook h2 check. Now try to get out of the checks and then we will be able to win this after e8. So now here we start calculating. Rook f2, f3, f4, f6 and back. But he will continue to give checks. Even if you get back. 
The problem is if you try to hide, let's say check rook h4. If you try to hide on king e6, he will give rook e5 check with the support of this pawn and then take this pawn and make a draw. So black wants to make a draw here. He just wants to stop this pawn and he will sacrifice the rook for it. If we play king g6, so king all the way here and king g6 again rook e5. That is why we can't move the king on the g file because of rook e2 and then black takes the pawn. What about rook h6 first? Oh, just a moment, just a moment. Rook h6 first. We can play rook h6 but black will take this pawn. And it is a theoretical draw, rook plus knight versus rook. So we don't have to analyze it. But let's just say it's a theoretical draw. Yes, we will discuss the end games later, rook plus knight versus the rook, but for now we just need to know that. We also need to study that, of course. Yes, imagine winning this end game in a game opponent would be amazed if you not take the rook. You are right. But as we saw, rook, uh, if we take the rook, black just stops in time this pawn. Should we go until king f6 taking the pawn and then back and then block with knight. So if we take this pawn and block with knight with knight g5, he will play rook h8 and then play rook e8. King f1, then rook h1. Okay, you will be amazed by this solution. But for king e6, he will play, uh, if you play king e6, when you take the pawn, he will go back to h1 and then check you from this side. You are going to be amazed by this solution. This is a very long solution, but with a simple idea. King f3, then check again. If you play king e3 here, I can give you check, but also I can play rook h1 and this skewer. So you will have to come back. King g3. Then directly rook e2, rook e2 I mean, rook e2 and capture this pawn. If rook can capture the pawn then black will uh, draw this position. Okay, are you ready to see the solution for this? This is so amazing. This is why chess is so beautiful. Okay, okay, let's, let's, let's go. Go with me. So king f3. Now rook h3 check. King f4. King h4. King f5. King h5. And now first we take this pawn. King f6. And now we start to go back again. Now if we play king e5. There is rook h1 and rook e1. So we can't go to e file. We can't go to g file. Because of rook e6. So we have to keep playing in the f file. 
king f5 rook h5 king f4 rook h4 king f3 rook h3 and now we go to e file by playing king e2 king e2 now he will continue to give checks again rook h2 check and now instead of going to e3 because he has rook h1 and rook e1 we go to the d file beautiful no this is not even over yet this is the beginning <laughs> king d3 rook h3 check king d4 rook h4 check king d5 rook h5 check king d6 rook h6 check if we play king d7 he will take the knight and pin this pawn so here we play knight f6 brilliant move knight f6 now he has to take this knight rook capture f6 now again if we go to king e5 he will play rook f1 and rook e1 and take this pawn so we have to go back again in the d file king d5 rook f5 check and here we play king e2 and white wins because next move there is e8 queens now since the rook is on f file, he can't go to f8 and stop the pawn. This is so beautiful. Come on, wow emotes, wow emotes in the chat. <laughs> yes, if you want to save it, this was the starting position. I will put the starting position. This was the starting position if you want to save it. And of course you know the solution now. Again I will go. First we take here. And then we play king f2. And then first we take this f6 pawn. We go back to the f file. We go to the e file. To the d file. Sacrifice the knight and then go back. Thank you for following. Uh, I have another idea when king was on f5 why can't we hide with knight so when your king was on f5 your pawn is on e7 rook is on h5 if you play knight g5 he will play rook h8 followed by rook e8 and stop the pawn so this is the only solution for this position only solution instead of taking the knight if rook h8 Okay, I understand what you're saying. So you're saying, one minute, let me go to that position. Where was it? So here, instead of taking the knight, if you go rook to h8, he will give this check and play knight f8. So if you go rook h8, trying to stop the queen, I will give this check first. And when the king moves, knight f8 followed by queen. <laughs> yes, yes. This is wow. Now let's see next one. Thank you for following. for cheer player a thousand cheers wow thank you so much thank you so much player you are very generous king h8 black king g1 rook a2 thank you fm lorn and black pawns on g7 and h5 beauty of end games but i prefer to win in opening <laughs> white to play and
fight to play and win. So these pawns are going here. This side. White to play and win. So take g7, h4. So if you directly take g7, let's see. He will play h4, king g6, h3, king g5, h2, king g4. He will make the queen. And now if you play king g3, with this idea rook a1, he can just simply play queen h8 and stop it. And... Um, this is not right. Yes, we can make draw of course anytime. But this is white to play and win. We can make draw anytime. Take this and give up the rook for the second pawn. Rook a5 h4 rook a4 then he will start with g5 uh, if you play rook a5 h4 and rook h5 he, okay i will play this if rook a5 h4 rook h5 he can play g5 thank you for following and if we take king f2 and we make a draw like that <laughs> yes yes you are right king h7 with the same idea we have to keep this pawn on g7. You are right. This g7 pawn will block the queen in the end. When he will make a queen. So, king h7, h4. And same happens. He makes a queen. And now you see the difference is this g7 pawn. And he cannot stop this rook a1 mate. And white wins here. But there are also other, so other lines. So after king h7, if black plays g5, let's say, if black plays g5, king g6, we are attacking both the pawns. g4. If he plays h pawn, it is losing because king g5, h3, king g4, h2, king g3. And even if he makes knight, we just play the king here. And we know this is a zugzwang, so he has to try to play this pawn. g4. And now white to play and win. <laughs> My head hurts. <laughs> Thank you, AKE4. Now the question is to play King G5 or King Capture H5. One is winning. One of them is winning and one is a draw. Because king h5, g3, king g4, g2, king g3, king h1. Yes, absolutely right, ak. So if we take the pawn, he will play g3. And if we reach this position, we know that black just plays king h1. 
and white cannot take this pawn because there is still mid. So we need to keep this extra pawn for black. So we play king g5, g3, king h4, g2 and now same position. It is not a stalemate and we can take this pawn. And black has to play h4 and white wins. So we need to keep this pawn. So king h5 is the move that wins. But king captures the pawn is a draw. Next is also a very beautiful puzzle. What was the starting position? Okay, this was the starting position. White to play and a win. So next is also a very beautiful puzzle. White king uh, d2 rook h2 pawn d4 black king is on b1 pawns on a2 and e6. White to play and win. I think my rating increased 100 points just by watching Rook Indians. I, ho I hope so. And I'm happy for you just to go. d5 then king c3 d5 d5 he will take it and king c3 will be queen with a check these pawns are going here white pawn going there black pawns going this side and he will play queen a8 and you see he stops this a4 that was your idea in the previous position d5 blocks coming oh one minute one minute i understand so d5 and king c3 i'm sorry for that let me think Thank you, GM in the DMs. <laughs> no, it will be a draw, I guess, because d5, ed5, king c3. I will play d4 check. I will not play the queen. I will play d4, and when you play king b3, I will make knight. And in the previous example, we had played king c3 and make a zugzwang, but this time the king has to move. And when the king moves anywhere, next move is knight c2. And even if black loses the spawn on d4, we reach theoretical draw end game. But good idea, AK. Rook h8 threat rook b8. But is the pawn endgame winning? Just a moment. If you play rook h8 with this idea, I will make a queen. And even after that, is this pawn endgame winning for white? I doubt it. I doubt about it. So this will be a draw. Rook h1 and rook a1. Very good, AK. Very good. 
This is the solution. Rook H1 check. King B2 and Rook A1. Brilliant move. And now if the king moves anywhere else, it doesn't matter. If you play this, we just play King C2, King C1 and we get this A1 square. And if you go and take this Rook, we play King C2. And now we have put black into a stalemate position on this corner. He has to play E5. And now we play d5, e4, d4, and we queen first, and we get this check on h8 or d4, and we are winning. So in the game, black made a knight here, black made a knight, but after king b3, he is losing anyway. Because next is queen d1 check. And he played knight d3 just to trick white. So if queen d3 there is a stalemate. But white played queen d4 and won this game. Thank you for following Ben. Okay, just a minute. Let me check which is next. Yes, this is also a composition next. King f6, white king uh, f6, black king h5, rook b1, and black pawns on a3 and b2. White to play and draw. Rook versus connected pawns. And here they say if two black pawns are placed on the third rank, so if there are two pawns on the third rank, or one pawn is on second rank and the second pawn is on the fourth rank, a rook cannot stop them. But sometimes, however, white can save himself by creating checkmate threats. White to play and draw. So black's threat is of course a2. King f5, king h4, king f4, king h3, king f3, king h2, Start with rook h1, the rook h1, in g4. How can white repeat to make a draw? We can repeat like this, but when he plays King f3, black goes to h2 and stops rook h1 checks. So if you start with rook h1, in g4, rook g1, then I will play king h3.
Thank you for following and welcome to our endgame series. I have seen this but I even I forgot how it was. Yes, this is a draw. Why to play and draw? King f5, trying to create a checkmate. So black's only way to try is to play king h4. After king f4, king h3. And after king f3, he will play king h2, trying to stop this. That's black's idea. Start with rook g1, but rook g1 will not work. Rook g1, then a2, and if king f5, there is b1 with a queen check. Thank you, eel9, for following. When king h2, go king f3. But your king is already on f3. So your king is already on f3 when you play that. What here? King e3. Now, uh, what if he plays king g3? Yes, if his king is on h2, he can't push the pawn, but it is white to play. That's why we have to play our move, and that is where uh, there is problem. Yes, a1 is queen. So I think this is the right direction. King f5, king h4, king f4, king h3. And after king h2, we have to move the king. What about king e3? Now there is no a2 because of rook b2 check. If he plays to h3, we go king f3 again. If he plays king g2, we play king d3. And we reach towards the pawn in time. Because this is check. So black will try to play king g3. And I think we can just give him check again. We give him check again. If he goes to here or here, we play this moves. And if he plays king h2, we just go back to b1 and try to repeat the position. Yes, that's it. Let me check. Yes, after king h2, we play king e3 and we just have to repeat the position. And if black plays king g2, king d3, king f3, king c3, a2, we play king capture b2 or rook f1, both is draw. Both is draw, it takes and white makes a draw. Thank you for following. I think both king f4 and king e3 works. One moment. Here, you mean? If king e3. But king g4 then? King e4. No, this, there is no mate after that, right? I can play king g4. Oh, you can reach here on time.
after king h2 so king f4 yes that also works i think you are right so just we need to find this idea of playing king f3 king e3 after king h2 Hello Giovanni, how are you doing today? Pawns are a6, b5. White to play and win. So this is a game position between Topolov and Belevsky. For this, I'm learning way more than watching other GMs play. Please, thank you, Hungary. This is game between Topolov and Belavsky. I don't know how it is pronounced. In 1995, Linares. And here, uh, this position is white to play and win, but in the game. Yeah, White found it in the game and White made a win. White made a win in the game. This is not a tragic comedy. So the question is to start with King B6 or Pawn B6. B6 runs to rook a5, yes. B6 is a big blunder, of course, because of rook a5. And now if king goes this side, we just take these both pawns. And king c4, also we play rook a6 and rook b6. That is why b6 is a blunder. And if black takes rook a6, then this is black's blunder because of b7. And we make the similar pattern with white. And white wins. So that is why b6 does not work because of rook a5 yes ak so now what about king c6 or king b6 if we start with king c6 king d2 and now we can't play b6 because this pawn hangs and king b7 then king c3 b6 king b4 a7 king b5 and if queens then rook takes and this pawn also is lost so we have to start with king b6 later can you show how that pattern wins the match which one Anand? yes so the king b6 is the move King d2 and now if again a7 then king c3 king b7 king b4 b6 king b5 is a draw that is why here after king d2 white played king a7 double exclamation mark and they say that in this starting position which was this um, we could not believe that white actually tries to play this pawn instead of this Generally, we want to play the pawn which is already on 6th rank. So we try so much to make this queen. But in fact, we have to make this queen first. King b6, king d2. King a7, exclamation mark. And black just resigned here. In the view of king c3, b6. King c4, b7. 
and if rook b1 we queen and then we next we promote this a pawn and white wins and they say we call this method a change of leader why does white push the less advanced b pawn first of all because the rook being placed on another file does not prevent its march in addition to it the a pawn that remains on the board after gaining the rook is more remote from black king and this is how white wins what's the name of this book this is the famous endgame book this dorot's keys i hope you can see Next one is a uh, white king a8, black king c7, white rook a6, black pawns on f4 and g3. Have you done the pawn endgames in previous? Yes, we started this endgame series with pawn endgames. So far, we have covered pawn endgames, then bishop endgames, knight endgames, and bishop versus knight. So now we have just today we started with the chapter rook and games so if you want you can go to my twitch and uh, check out my previous videos if you want to learn about one and games it's right there it's not restricted is this your first look in this book uh, i have seen some of the positions but i have not completed all this book And these end games, they are such positions that even if we see them once, it's not enough. We have to see them many times to completely understand the idea. Oops. This is white to move and win. Looks very dangerous. These pawns are going here. I would go rook g6 and rook g4. Do you have a YouTube channel? Just upload there too. Okay, Hungary. I will upload this series, especially this endgame series. I have YouTube channel, but I have so far not um uploaded any of the twitch streams there Um, let me check request for ingredient posture check okay ben fine bronze happy diwali to you too rook g6 looks like candidate move so we have to try to stop this pawns first and they're right here in a battle against two connected pawns the best position for the rook is behind the more advanced pawn so this is more advanced pawn so we start with rook g6. So now we are stopping both the pawns. If we keep the rook on f6, if we play rook f6, then he just plays g2. And this does not work, g2. You can't take the pawn and now it's too late. Next move f2 and in fact black will win. So we put it on g6. Now he cannot move any of the pawns, so he tries to bring the king, king d7, and now rook g4, exclamation move. We are attacking this. 
so white uh, is attacking these pawns and he will take these pawns so black's last try is to play g2 rook capture g2 and king e6 so this is black's last attempt and now the best move is just to play rook g5 and we prevent this king from uh, going further from this fifth rank and there is no way black can make progress here we already saw this in the first position if king f6 we just wait and when black plays f3 we play rook a3 and we play rook f3 and get this pawn so if we cut off the king on the fifth rank then white wins easily so after rook g5 if we just place the king we start bringing the king closer and push it further and then we win you can just play king e6 and next move rook f5 and take the pawns. Next is tragic comedies. King on e6, black king c8, black king d8, rook b1, and black pawns on h7, g3, and f2. These pawns are going here. And this is a game between Arul Late Burgenitz played in 1956. And they write here, the game was adjourned here and White resigned without playing. So White just resigned. And they say that this position in which White resigned is actually draw for White. So we have to find it, White to play and draw. <laughs> tragic comedies they are quite fun you are not in your room today i'm in room of course you see all this RP cord you read him hydrate Yes, I just I'm just in different room. What's your rating in leeches? I don't know. Must be around 2400. But it keeps changing. <laughs> These online chess games. Yes, these are all trophies. And they are just half of them. <laughs> King d6, um, he will play king c8.
rook b8 rook f8 but he will play g2 right Thank you, Adit, for following. Yes, this is similar to previous puzzle. Try to find checkmate ideas to make a draw. So we start with king d6, then king c8. Then maybe rook c1 check. King d6, king c8, rook c1. King b7 then give again check, rook b1 and make him forced to go on the a file then we can bring the king. Thank you for following, I will be back in one minute I need to go to push. <laughs> What happened? Did you find? Okay, let's see. Let's see. But it has to start with King D6. So we start with King D6. Of course, no point going this side because we just repeat. And he can't go king g8, there is just checkmate. So king c8, now we give him check. King b7, rook b1. King a6, okay, doesn't matter, wherever he goes, 
we play this one of these moves so king a6 king c6 king a5 king c5 a4 king c4 king a3 king c3 and again after king a2 we play rook f1 that was the idea like in previous game he can't play g2 because then we have rook capture f2 check and he can't move the king because of rook a1 is made and if he pushes the pawn let's say h6 or h5 we play king d3 and now the king ru rushes to the pawns h4 king e3 h3 now it looks very dangerous but we just simply play rook capture f2 check pawn takes and king f2 with the draw Another tragic comedy. We have this is um, the next one is more sad. King is on g4, black king d4, and pawns c3 b3, rook on b8. Thank you, Sanket, for following. Did his opponent point the win out? I don't know <laughs> what happened after that game, but he just resigned. <laughs> this is more sad. Played in 1954 between Fred Stein Lutico. White to play. These pawns are going this side. And in the game, White just resigned because he thought the pawns are um, so fast and he cannot stop them. No, Rook cannot take, Rook cannot take. Rook cannot take because of the same idea. If you take the spawn, then he goes c2. And the threat is c1 queen. And if you start giving checks, I will go all the way back. And then go to c1 and then promote. So that is why he thought that this is losing. And he resigned in the game. But there is just simple move and that is rook b4 check. And this is draw. Because now the king moves, then we take this pawn and take this also. Thank you for following rook b4 and it's just simple draw. Of course, king to d3, we take this and this is a pawn. This pawn is pinned, so we just take this pawn later. We place here we just take this pawn and make a draw and if it goes back then we just take this and we control this square that is why this is just a draw okay we have one more tragic comedy <laughs> so many tragic comedies in this one Here put white king on b5, pawns on a5, b4, black king g3, pawn on h2, rook h8, rook a1. I think he must have just saw that rook capture b3, c2 is losing and did not consider rook b4. So this is a game between Maroxi versus Tarash. 
so this is the same maroxi who um, invented this maroxi bind in sicilian defense and there is also opening on tarash tarash defense in queen's gambit white to play and win Yes, also in French defense, there is Tarash variation. And the Maroxi bind in Sicilian is when white plays c4 and then keeps the pawn on e4 and c4. Rook capture pawn or a6. <laughs> Why capture pawn instead of wait? Maybe to make the king go back further. So if we let him queen, then he can take with the rook. But if we want to force his king to go back further, then we have to take it immediately. Rook h2. So first, let's see what happened in the game. What happened in the game. So in the game versus Maroxi, Tarash, White played king c6. King c6. And this was a blunder because white missed a win. Black played rook c1. Let's just see the game continuation. King b6. Rook c4. And this was an easy draw because now he can't play b5 because of rook h4. So he takes rook capture h2. And now black does not even have to calculate all this. He just takes this pawn instead. King c5, rook attacks the pawn and after king b5, rook capture a5, the game was drawn like this. So here there are two ways for white to win this end game, but both have the same idea. Two ways for white to win this. We can start with rook capture h2 or king a6 but the idea in this position is that we have to try to push this pawn and not a5 so we have to think about this pawn and make it promote so white can start with rook capture h2 king h2 and king a6 in g3 b5 king f4 b6 king e5 b7 and white wins king d6 and b8 queens There is another solution that is king a6 king a6 with the same idea yes it's the same idea anyway this transposes why doesn't a6 work okay let me check a6 first if we play a6 What happens for e6? <laughs> it's a bit zero can games.
Let me think what happens for e6. One moment. Maybe just rook a1 and bring the king and it's a draw. h1 rook takes h1 rook takes then a7 let's say rook h8 and we can keep giving checks i think or not rook a1. okay let me take help here let me take help Rook a1, in b6, yes we reach just in time, we reach in time, and then we take these pawns. If we had played here rook h8, then it's risky, king b6. b5, okay, b5. And now again shouldering this king, king c6 is the move. And white spawns are very strong. King h1, rook on e6, pawns on e5, f7, black king, h3, pawn h2, and a rook a2. White to play and, and win. Is it win? Send me game challenges right now, please. Rook a6, rook capture, e6, then there is checkmate, rook here. So white pawns are going this way, and black pawn is going this way. If we queen also, there is rook a1, checkmate. Rook a6, he will just take it, right? Rook h6, king g3. Rook g6, king h3. Sack the rook. But it's not possible. Rook h6, king g3. If you just sack the rook, he will checkmate. Rook a1. Rook h6, king g3. Rook g6, king h3. Yes, 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 Codex and James Blunder. 
that is the way to go rook h6 check king g3 so only way to try to win is to play rook g6 and followed by this brilliant move rook g1 look at this move we have to stop this checkmates that's why we have to go rook g1 now black will take it six and king g1 now if we place king g3 here trying to checkmate it's not possible because we just queen anyway followed by queen f1 and this is winning and what else is there Okay, so he can play rook a8, trying to stop this pawns. Again, now e6 will be a mistake because of king g3. So white plays king f2. And this is winning for white. Because after rook f8, e6, king g4, and just king e3 followed by e7. So these pawns are too strong for black to hold them. We just need to bring the king out of these uh, checks and mating ideas. Yes. King e7, a rook on h3, bishop g2, black king g7, and pawns on h6, a4, b, no, a4, b3. No way I had played king f2, yes, you remember we saw this idea that if we play e6, black will play king f3. And then constant checkmate ideas and will defend it. Yes, James is a puzzle solving machine. Yesterday he reached 3000 rating on Lee Chess puzzles and also had a quite a celebration after that. So he is extremely strong, of course. Yes, yesterday night he reached 3000. Thank you for the gift, James Bunter. Thank you so much. Yes, this is white to play and win. White to play and win. So these pawns are going this side and white spawn is going that side. Rook g3 check. Now we need to calculate both king h8 and king h7. But that is the start. King h8 is winning. Why is it winning? Thank you James again, thank you so much.
<laughs> you are crazy <laughs> crazy generous King F7 followed by Rook C3 followed by C8 But Rook C8 is still not checkmate Trinity Yes, I need only one more norm to become Poop and Grandmaster I'm just waiting so I can play again tournaments If king s8 is checkmate, how is it checkmate? Okay, you are saying rook g3 if king h8. But even if you go rook c3, rook c8, it's not a checkmate. He can go to king h7. Do you also need 2300 rating? Yes. I think I'm close by somewhere. But when the tournaments will start again, I will make it. I will make it. I have been working on chess. Every day. Thank you, James Splunder, for gifting. <laughs> James is also a gifting machine. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice time guys we'll prepare stream about max u so today will be classical games go 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 Rook g3 check then both king h8 and king h7. I think black has to play king h8 because if he plays king h7 we can play king f6 and now if b2 but hmm. now if b2 we have rook g7 check attack this pawn and then play king g6 and there will be checkmate like that something like that so rook g3 black has to play king h8 rook c3 then king walk till g6 then rook mate but he will also queen. So rook g3, king h8. Rook c3, then b2. King h7, rook g6. Rook g6, then b2. Thank you for your support, James Blunder. Black spawns are advanced far enough, but his king is badly placed, so white can at least make a draw. The question is whether he can win. So first move rook g8, king h8. In case of king h7, 
in case of king h7 the solution is simple king f6 b2 yes this is what we saw rook g7 and then we attack this pawn and after king g6 rook b8 will be made so the main line is with king h8 after rook g3 king h8 is the main line see you james plunder and good luck for your stream yes this is what i saw but i did not find after king h8 king h8 rook g6 double exclamation mark well done well done you found rook g6 b2 rook b6 a3 king f7 thank you for following king f7 now these pawns are um what if a2 okay this is the checkmate this is the checkmate we are threatening so he has to defend with king h7 defends this checkmate and now here there are some brilliant moves for white king h7 because to save this checkmate one minute i will go again so this was the position rook g3 king h8 rook g6 what if he plays king h7 Okay, rook b6. It just transposes. I'm sorry. Rook b6 just transposes. And if we place king g7, there is rook b4. And we get the spawns. Thank you for following. So the main line is here. After rook g6, b2. Rook b6, a3. King f7, threatening this checkmate. If you play b1, I will just take this queen. So king h7. And now white to play and win again. King f6 he will play a2. King f6 he will play a2. If you play rook b7 here. Again a2. Then king f6. One moment. So rook b7 I have to play something like h5. Rook b3 I will play a2. King f6 idea is rook b7 and king g6. So king f6 I will play a2. Rook b7 king g8. King g6 king f8. Yes, and also promotes with check. He promotes with check. We are missing this that he can check our king after this. Hello, Timothy. Welcome. G4. Yes, yes, Salambo. G4 is the move here g4 excellent move by white and now black is in zugzwang because he can't play king h8 because of rook h6 mate if he plays we just take it so black will play a2 and now again we go g5 look at this idea now he can't queen anyway if he queens either way we play g6 king h8 g7 and g8 queen for example if he queens oh there is just rook at six mate okay if you queen you just play rook at six mate anyway so he takes this he takes this pawn and now simple rook b2 followed by rook h2 is made 
rook b2 a1 queen and this is made yes this is crazy position but it was such a beautiful idea to force g4 g5 yes you are right sanket if he queens we, we just play rook at six mate so that is why he has to take if he plays h5 also there is rook at six mate so takes and then we take this followed by mate on the h file next is an instructive example instructive example king e6 black king e3 pawns on g2 b2 and a rook on g1 thank you for following raising this is an instructive example and they say here if four files separate these pawns so these are four files separating these two pawns then the rook can stop them without the help of the king white to play and draw don't worry codex so we just we just go through them to understand the ideas we don't have to remember everything Rook e1 check, king f2. Rook b1, yes, you are right. Rook b1. So now we just keep playing the rook from b1 to g1. That's it, we have to do. Yes, Mr. Sabon, we just have to keep playing rook b1 and rook g1. So now he cannot go to f2. If he goes to f2, we take this pawn. And if he goes to d3, king d3, threatening to play king c2, we just go this side. And doesn't matter if he plays king here we just move the king thank you for following he cannot go to a2 anyway because then we just take it so this is the repetition of moves king e3 rook b1 king d3 and rook g1 and this is a draw and neither side can make any progress in this position Now the same position except this pawn we will move from b2 to c2. So it is here on e3. Thank you JW. Um, one second this is white to play. So exact same position but instead pawn on b2 we have moved this pawn to c2 and now white will lose this because there is no way to stop both these pawns because if he plays rook c1 black plays king d2 and wins. White king g6, black king a1, pawns on 
a2 c5 rook on b8 So these black pawns are going this side, black to play and win. Raising redeem hydrate. <laughs> yes, yes, C four is only legal move. <laughs> we don't have to think about that. C four is the only move. I hope everybody agrees. And now here white has two moves, king f5 or rook c8. So first if he plays rook c8. King b2, then white will give check again, I guess. But b2, rook b8, king c2, rook a2. They say here the simple way to win is to play c3. And if rook c3, king b2, black wins because white cannot stop this. But what happens if we directly play king b2? If we directly play king b2? Let us take help. And yeah, this is also winning. Okay, this is also winning. So rook c8, we just play king b2 or c3, doesn't matter. Both are winning. So the main line for white is to play king f5. So after c4, white plays king f5. Why is it winning? It is, it's a long line. We don't have to analyze that. But the simple way is to play c3 and then king b2. It's also, um, it's just simple winning. That's why. But uh, Stockfish says that king b2 also is right. I will not go into that right now. King f5. Again, c3 is the only move. Rook c8. Thank you, Zak is 88. Rook c8. King b2. Rook b8. Again, there are two ways to go. Both of these are fine. King a3 and king c2. Thank you, Il, for joining. Good day. So, both of these moves are fine. King c2. Rook a8. King b3. Rook b8 check. King c4 and after rook a8, black plays c2 and wins.
Okay, two more positions. What if rook c8 check? Where is rook c8? Okay, in the last position you mean? Last position rook c8? We can just start running with the king and hide. And then one of the pawn will queen. Of course not in here because... Okay, but still there is king f2. Yes. And white cannot stop both these pawns. Thank you for following and welcome. White King H8. Rook d8, black king, c5, pawns, b5, f4, and g4. So these pawns are going this side, white to play and draw. This is white to play and draw. <laughs> king c3, king c8. This is c3, this is c8. You mean rook c8. By the way, after king b2, stockfish didn't find a win in the last puzzle. So c3 in the only win. Wow. Wow, that's very interesting. <laughs> so C3 was the only move, yes, Codex? I just switched on Stockfish for a minute. It was still giving big evaluation, but maybe you are right. So these pawns are very dangerous. Black has three pawns. Yes, Rook F8 or G8, you are right, Aryan. So we have to try to take one of these pawns. It stays on minus 7 after 10 moves. Crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. So there is way to take one of these pawns. We can play, for example, rook f8. Make this pawn move, f3. And we can play rook f4. And we can get one of these pawns. But the question is, which pawn should we take? The F pawn or the G pawn? Rook G8, G3, then Rook G4, and then we can get this F pawn. So shall we start with Rook G8 or Rook F8? It is something that we learned just now. The gap between two pawns, if it is uh, four squares, then it will be a draw. Otherwise, black will win. That is why we have to try to eliminate this pawn 
if we eliminate this pawn then the difference between these two pawns will be three squares this will be three squares and then black will win so let's try to take this pawn so we start with rook g8 g3 rook g4 b4 rook capture f4 b3 and we reach this end game that we saw g2 rook g1 b2 and when he plays this king to e3 threatening this we play rook b1 and this is the draw we studied earlier Okay, now last position for today. Last position, and then we will stop. King f7, rook g7, black king f1, and pawns f2, h5. pawns are going this side and this is a white to play and draw this is very beautiful I'm happy that we are ending with this puzzle in the end. Rook h7, black will move the king. King e2 or king g2. Rook g3, then h4. Or even king e1. Viking G8 <laughs> It's good that you show which side black are going. Yes, it's a good idea every time to show them It's also good for me King G8 H4 Rook at 7 H3 and if you take King G2 Rook g8, h4. Yes, codex. Yes, you have found it. You have found it. That's a brilliant answer. That's a brilliant answer by you, codex. as codex suggested and also before uh, i think sanket suggested king g8 
in G8. This is unbelievable move and you will see why this move is important. So black plays H4. If he moves the king, we just keep giving checks. We just keep giving checks. So king uh, G8, H4. Rook H7, H3. Rook capture H3. In G2, it looks like white is losing because next is F1 queen. But now we play rook h7 brilliant move and after queen we just keep giving these checks rook h7 rook g7 and if king moves this side then we have rook f7 and we take the queen does king e7 also work i think it will not work because if you play king e7 he plays the same variation And now when you go back, queens, you check the king will start moving ahead till the end. And the king will uh, attack this rook. That's why your king needs to be here. So you can continue playing rook g7 and rook h7. <laughs> well done. So unbelievable move king g8 first. In g8 and this is the only move white draws this is a composition by check over in 1949 and they have also given another line uh, they say if you start with king e6 then it is not helpful because black plays king e2 and there is no check on this file anymore rook g2 then king e3 with the idea h4 and f1 and after it takes this pawn king f5 king g3 and black wins because this pawn will promote okay it is time for us to stop here it is time for us to stop and Tomorrow we will continue with rook and games and today we finish the chapter rook versus pawn. So this was all end games in which one side has rook and other side has pawns. But from tomorrow we will start the uh, main rook and games that is both the sides have rooks and then one side has pawns and different situations in that. So the biggest chapter will um, continue. <laughs> will there be an examination later on no examination i just hope that you have you have um fun here on the stream and um also we together improve chess okay hungary i will keep that in mind i will raid right now one moment today almost been three hours i just forgot the time completely What you do is amazing and you should know that thank you just to go thank you for that positive feedback hello abhi we are just finishing so i hope we will see you in the next stream tomorrow and we will rate my good friend nandi chess and let's rate her and everybody do support her and follow her so i will see you and have great time great games and take care see you next time I thought you read to Badur. He is not online. I don't see him streaming right now. Okay, I will click raid. Bye bye.